welcome to the age of the super hovercraft and to Dover, where the world's first car passenger service by this type of craft has been launched. The SRN4, the biggest ever built, was poised on its platform beside the English Channel, awaiting the arrival of Princess Margaret. The Royal Helicopter touched down beside the waiting giant, which was shortly to make transport history, for the Princess was to inaugurate the new cross-channel service. The mayor of the famous port, Alderman Aslett, greeted Her Royal Highness. This indeed was a proud day for the first citizen of Dover. Princess Margaret met members of SRN 4's crew, including Captain Benner Lund, one of the most experienced hovercraft pilots in the world, who was to be at the controls on the inaugural voyage. Before boarding the Mountbatten-class hovercraft, Princess Margaret unveiled a commemorative plaque at the hoverport. This was an occasion well worthy of remembrance. And then, for the first time, the Princess and Lord Snowden went aboard the mighty giant of British Rail Sea Speed Service, a service which shrinks the distance between the continent and the White Cliffs of Dover. Gracefully, her seven-foot skirt filled with a powerful downthrust of air. She lifted and eased towards the sea. So the 165-tonner gently hovered out into the harbour towards the world's busiest shipping lane. Destination, Beloy. Out of the sanctuary of the harbour wall she went, away from the famous white cliffs which are the doorstep of England. The threshold, which has repulsed invader and witnessed the beginning of other great ventures. Now her four Rolls-Royce Marine Proteus engines, thrusting almost 14,000 horsepower, the SRN4 skimmed out into the channel. On board, the Royal Party and VIP passengers relaxed in comfort as speed built up. The sea scudded past at over 60 miles an hour. For Dr. Christopher Cockerell, hovercraft inventor, this was a time of marvelous fulfillment. The great machine, designed to carry 254 passengers and 30 cars, is only the start of the hovercraft age. The princess and her husband enjoyed a trip which proved that the English Channel is only half an hour wide. A strip of sea shrunk to river width by the British seabird. Rapidly, she closed on Boulogne. Smoothly, with plenty of power to spare, the 130-foot long, 78-foot wide giant skimmed the waves. Little more than 30 minutes after leaving Dover, SRN4 carefully picked her way up onto the French beach. Amazingly gently for her enormous size, she nosed towards the hover pad at the end of her inaugural flight. No one can deny the greatness of this all British achievement and its technical skill. Captain Benner Lund and First Officer Martin Godfrey had brought the SRN4 across the channel and into the annals of transport history. The Portel Hoverport gave its new charge and its princess passenger a great welcome. Sir Patrick Riley, British ambassador, and France's first secretary, Monsieur Jean de Lepovsky, headed the list of dignitaries who greeted the princess. But it was also an occasion of warm informality. Princess Margaret and Lord Snowden could have no doubt about the enthusiasm of the French. The inaugural flight passengers disembarked to make their way to the hover terminal building, where the princess was to unveil a brown marble plaque to commemorate the start of the hovercraft service between Britain and France. 38 feet tall, the Princess Margaret, as she's to be known, stood silently on her pad, a new fast link between two nations. Then, with a surge of power, she lifted to head home back across the channel once more to carve a new route which brings different people closer together. The hovercraft age had arrived.